final speaker this is, is uh, Adrian Stallwood, who is scientific consultant for Animal Aid. So a big round of applause for Adrian Stallwood. So, uh, another World Day March and another year we are gathered. We could be forgiven for wondering if the abuse of animals in labs will ever end. From where I stand, there are a few new lights of investigation being shone into the dark, and the key battlegrounds, to me, in some ways look clearer. I find it important at some point to remind myself over the years that some progress has been made. In the UK in 2000, 1,800 cats, 7,600 dogs, 3,700 monkeys, 27,000 rabbits and 56,000 guinea pigs were used in UK labs. The comparable figures for 2011 were 150 cats, 2,900 dogs, 1,500 monkeys, 12,000 rabbits and 11,500 guinea pigs. These figures are still shocking, but they are moving in the right direction. The use of great apes was banned in 1997, and there is now a complete EU-wide ban on animal testing for cosmetics. So these reductions in the use of some species are clearly a response to public pressure. It's not through any desire of the experimenters to scuffer their own careers. Their lobby groups are continuing to speak out against restrictions on even hugely controversial experiments. But public disgust generated by the exposure of cruelty has undoubtedly stopped some projects. We must remember that. And prevented others from being proposed at all. However, it is clear that larger mammals have been replaced in many experiments by smaller ones, mainly mice. And we are now seeing the results of this modern obsession with curing entirely preventable diseases through genetic research. The mass abuse of millions of animals. The genetic modification of rodents has pushed the number of UK procedures to a 24-year high, with around 2.7 million mice being used last year. Universities like Oxford, like Bristol, like Manchester, like Cardiff, like all the big users, they're mainly to blame. Clearly, larger animals require all the pressure we can exert to defend them. The opposition, though, likes to bank on the idea that the ordeals of mice are less likely to attract controversy or disgust. This is sizeism, and it largely explains why lab cruelty towards certain species is still so widely practiced. It's just simply prejudice with no rational basis. It's a dogma practiced by bullies. Mice are intelligent and complex mammals. They feel pain in the same way as people. Their rich emotional lives encompass excitement, pleasure in social contact, empathy for their fellows, as well as fear and despair. They are every bit of worthy of respect, care and compassion as larger animals. But sadly, they probably receive the rawest deal. We know repellent exam experiments are carried out on cats, dogs and primates. But getting a license is more difficult, and the sort of thing done to mice is rarely, although in some dishonourable exceptions, is rarely permitted. Lately it seems the tortures endured by mice are becoming more visible, and progress can at last be made in changing public perceptions and saving lives. Animal Aid published a new report into the production and experimentation on GM mice earlier this year. And our chief sources were scientific journals and papers and past undercover work. We set out why creating GM animals is crude, cruel and unpredictable with a massively high attrition rate. Many mice die from severe side effects like water on the bone, cleft palate or other severe facial deformities. Others die from asphyxia due to undeveloped lungs or obstructed airways. Their internal organs may be exposed or they may fatally dehydrate due to useless and porous skin. Many afflictions are of course deliberately induced. Mice have been engineered to develop all kinds of diseases, lethal heart failure, painful cancers like the Cardiff mice with dozens and dozens of bleeding bowel tumours who all died due to blocked bladders full of cancer. They've been created epilepsy mice. They die by 10 weeks of age of constant seizures, malnutrition or dehydration. 
Mice have been crazy, so mentally disturbed they chew through their own skin. Wound themselves in the face, are so anxious they constantly try and hide away. Then there's the experiments themselves. Recent examples, Edinburgh, mice given strokes by a wires inserted into blood vessels in their brains. Mice forced to inhale cigarette smoke. Mice whose hearts burst after surgically induced heart attacks. Mice who die from incessant seizures. Psychiatric experiments. They include putting mice into cylinders filled with tepid water and waiting until they despair of ever escaping and stop swimming around altogether. Breeding GM mice, they, they tell you it's, it's harmless, it doesn't hurt them. It involves the manipulation of the reproductive cycles, behaviour, living conditions and health status of literally millions of animals. Mass killing regimes are necessary to ensure the colonies remain productive. Uh, across the year, in the UK, millions of so-called excess or spent mice have their necks crudely broken or are gassed with carbon dioxide. They're not even accorded the dignity of official recognition. We're told by the experiments in the Home Office, the breeding and the killing of the experiments are performed within a system with the highest possible welfare standards. Who are they trying to kill? I don't know if any of you saw the recent BUAV's uh, License to Kill campaign recently published. It shows the truth about what rats and mice endure in UK labs. It is utterly shameful. It is utterly horrific. The footage only confirms what we already know to be true. The platitudes about animal welfare are pure propaganda. All the cruelty uncovered by previous investigations was there at Imperial College London. The foul experiments, the starvation, the violent, miserable deaths, the awful pain, and the attitude of vivisectionists that found abject cruelty funny. Animal Holocaust. After watching the film, the RSPCA released a statement. This footage is appalling. One of the worst and most upsetting cases our research animal experts have ever seen. Many of us have been close to tears watching it. It shows total incompetence and a complete disregard for the animals being experimented on and the legislation put in place to control animal use. The BUAB mail-out is adorned with verbatim researchers' quotes which show how callousness and incompetence flourishes in supposedly a world-leading research facility. I'd just like to give you a few of those now. So this is verbatim from supposedly a world-leading um, research facility. Because I'm doing feeding studies, I want to make sure I don't crack their teeth, laughs. Sometimes if you tighten it, their teeth break. And that's not really useful if you're doing feeding studies. I cold one because I made a mistake, laughs. I left the clamp in the tummy and I stitched it up and I was looking for the clamp. Where is it? Then I realised, oh my god, there's a clamp still in the mouse's tummy. We've never had this many go in such a short space of time as well. A couple I had to kill because the cannula wasn't in the right place. And then we've lost six, so quite a lot already. Decapitating is the quickest way. I didn't like it, I didn't like it at all. Hopefully it'll be easier this time, like murdering. Look at, their neck. Look at the animals when they end the surgery, they still feel pain because she's not very good with analgesia, laughs, so they don't eat anything. So, we don't believe for one second that Imperial College is an isolated example. The Home Office, with their tiny number of inspectors, cannot possibly police all the research facilities in the UK. How can we be assured that these behaviours are not entirely typical of labs up and down the country? Part of the answer is to keep nothing secret. Open the lab doors, get rid of secrecy laws, publish the project licences in full. Another part is increased monitoring by a CCTV, for example. Yeah. Yet another is allowing dissenting voices a say in the licensing process. So overall then, although the revelations and reports are horrible, it is necessary to shine lights into the dark world of laboratory rodents. Their time has come. Their suffering must be made as visible as possible, because that is the first step in ending it. Thank you. Yeah.